Imagine a world filled with fluffy bunnies prancing across the meadows. See the clouds wafting through the sky. Now chop off all their heads, gouge out their eyes, rip open their spleens, because in the 41st millennium there is only war. Hello. This is a presentation uh, in the Pecha Kucha style of Warhammer 40k from Games Workshop. Warhammer 40,000 is a tabletop game which has most recently gained even more prominence amongst the gaming community through the Games Workshop teaming up with THQ to make some video games about it. You may have re you may have seen them in the shops. Um, they're Dawn of War and it's following expansions, Dawn of War 2 and its expansions. Their first foray into it though was Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior which took on a different tone entirely where you took on the role of a Tau Fire Warrior. Fire Warrior being the name of the class of soldier. Tau are pretty much, sam think of samurai in space. Now think of all the kind of Japanese anime you see with all the mechas and all that. Yeah. That's the Tau. Samurai in space with access to lots of mechas. Now, um, uh, this is this gained some more prominence for them. Um, but I'd like to take a minute, or two, or three, depending on how long this is, <laughs> uh, to talk to you about each of the actual races in 40,000 that you can actually play as. Um, you get access to the Space Marines, who who are pretty much the champions of humanity. Each one of these is a seven foot tall, genetically altered human. No longer human are they, though they have now become superhuman. And are just pretty much badass. That's the Space Marines. The Imperial Guard are, whereas the Space Marines are a surgical tool, the Imperial Guard of humanity are pretty much a sledgehammer. They are normal humans, squishy and everything armed with thousands upon thousands of tanks. That's the Imperial Guard, pretty much smashed their way through everything. You then have the enemies facing humanity. You have the Orcs, as ugly as they are stupid. Their version of landing on a planet is, ex is involving a crash. Lots of crashes. They pretty much swarm over everything in a green tide of death. Speaking of tides of death, you then have the Tyranids. Think of a cross between Alien, from Alien, um, Dinosaurs, and you know those bug things from Starship Troopers? Yeah, mix all three of those together and you have the Tyranids. Their only goal is to consume everything and become the ultimate biological being on the, cr on the face of the Earth. Face of the universe, even. You then have the Necrons, who are complete and utter opposite from the Tyranids. They are mechanical undead, for lack of a better term for them. Think of Terminator. That's the Necrons. Their only goal is to absorb all the souls of the galaxy. Yeah, so pretty much like the Tyranids, but mechanical versions who want to consume all life in their own little way and make every world a barren wasteland, whereas the Tyranids absorb every single last piece of living matter, the Necrons just wipe everything out. Uh, you then have the Eldar and the Dark Eldar. Their history goes back to pretty much the beginning of the 41st millennium, or even beyond that. Uh, the El Think of space elves. Elves in space. That's the best description that anyone can come up with for the Eldar. The Eldar and Dark Eldar are actually the same race, but also not in the same in the same sense. Uh, the Eldar were originally all one race, Eldar, Dark Eldar, one race, uh, and then they then they had this huge empire. They had this huge empire, which, well, as time went on, they were the most powerful beings. In we were still in caveman stages at the point that they were traveling from one end of the galaxy to the other, so they could afford a little decadence and how they reveled in their decadence, which then gave rise to the Dark Eldar and one of the Chaos Gods. Which brings me nicely onto the next topic, Chaos Gods. The Gods of Chaos. Oh, yes. You have Korn, the Blood God. What he wants is pretty much his name, Blood. He doesn't care as whose, as long as he gets blood. 
the more blood, the happier. The more skulls that he gets for his little throne, the better. You then have Nurgle, the god of pestilence and decay. Oh, God. Every disease you can possibly imagine, he has it. He catalogues it. All of his demons are carrying variations of every single plague you can imagine, and 10,000 more that you can't even possibly begin to describe. Then you have Sinch, the god of magic and change. Pretty much what <laughs> the name suggests. God of magic, what, what else can you say about that? Uh, you then have, yes, I know this is science fiction type thing, bear with me, okay? It's kind of like psychic powers and all that kind of shit for magic, okay? You then have, um, uh... The Chaos God Slanesh. Uh, the Chaos God of Slanesh is the God of Pleasure. Yeah, don't get any ideas before you start thinking, ooh, this one says nice. Think of, think of your favorite band, right? Their fav your favorite song from your favorite band. I get... You take pleasure in listening to that song, right? Now think of that for eternity. You'd have to find new ways of making it pleasurable again, wouldn't you? You'd have to make the music louder, or change the song, or something. And you do do that over, over, and over, and over, and over, and over again, just to get a single ounce of pleasure from listening to it. It would drive you insane. Oh, I forgot to mention the Dark Eldar stuff, whereas the Eldar are pretty much trying to survive from their lost empire. The, Del the Dark Eldar, well, you wonder why you're afraid of the dark. It's not the dark you're afraid of. It's the stuff lurking within it. And the Dark Eldar are absolute masters of terror. Think of all the kind of like terrorist attacks that Al-Qaeda and all that have done, right? child's play. That is nothing more than the tip of the iceberg where the Dark Eldar are concerned. You do not want to be captured alive by a Dark Eldar. Oh no. Oh no no no. If you think the tortures that humans can inflict upon one another or something. <laughs> the Dark Eldar are completely another subject. Uh, let's see. I think that's me pretty much covered all the races. Oh no. There's also the Sisters of Battle for the Imperium of Mankind. Pretty much think nuns with guns. That's effectively the Sisters of Battle. They are nuns with guns. Think of the Spanish Inquisition, combine it with nuns with guns, and you've pretty much got the Sisters of Battle. Their other term is also the Witchfinders. Yes, in Spanish Inquisition. Now combine that with Chaos Gods and all the rest of the nut jobs running around the galaxy. And, well, hey, welcome to our 41st millennium where your very best friend who you've known for years could one day turn around and kill you in the next second. Welcome to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium.